Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to do five graphs that explain the Australian economy in October 2021. So, the source for this information comes from the RBA's chart pack, and that I will link to this in the show notes. And this comes out um, every month. It's got a really great summary of domestic and international economic developments in a series of charts. So you can just download the PDF and see what's been happening. As I said, there will be a link in the description. So all I've done is taken out five graphs that I think are extremely important in explaining the Australian economy as of October, October, October 2021. Our first graph. Okay, so our first graph is a pretty important statistic which is Australia's GDP growth. So let's just make that clear over here that we're talking about Australia's GDP growth, um, that this is for the June quarter of 2021. So June quarter 21. And I've just made a really big note here that the September quarter stats will come out on the 1st of December. So that will be after the 2021 economics HSC. So this will be the GDP figures that you should include. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can break this down a bit more. Um, yeah, a bit more something so that so we've got Australia's GDP growth, gross domestic product. On this side, we've got percentage growth in GDP and that here we've got time. So the years. And you can see that the scale is the same on both sides, that here is where zero is, so that if we are above this line, we have got positive GDP numbers, and then below this line, we have negative GDP numbers. So that what we can see, and that it really has skewed everything, is that this blue, dark blue here is for the full year and these little blue parts, light blue parts, are for the quarters. You can see here that going back, let's say, what, into the early 90s, that GDP yearly was positive all through this time. That it was only here during the period of COVID-19 that Australia experienced periods of negative economic growth, where GDP actually fell during this COVID-19 pandemic. But what you can see here is that more recently, into the June quarter, that GDP grew quite substantially. So that here, if we're saying, well, what has Australia's economic growth been doing? That actually it has been increasing quite substantially during the June quarter. What is important to note, though, is that these figures exclude the lockdown that took place between um, June, July and October of 2021 in New South Wales, uh, ongoing as of now in Melbourne, ACT, those kinds of places. So that it's important to mention that, yes, growth has been positive, but that there have been those lockdowns which will affect GDP, but we won't know what that has done until December. So in terms of what you're saying, that you can say prior to those lockdowns that GDP had been growing quite substantially, that you can see the year-ended growth here is of GDP that is actually over 8%, which has been a huge increase from that sort of negative 5% here during that peak of COVID before the most recent lockdowns. So I know it's not as kind of clear or as kind of, um, what is it, simple as would be necessary or would be preferable. So the kind of things we're trying to say is that GDP has been increasing as of the June quarter, 
but we then got those lockdowns and that is likely to see a fall in the nation's gross domestic product. So that is our first graph. So let's scroll out a little bit and let's go down here. So again, this is for the June quarter of 2021 that the September quarter stats won't come out until the 1st of December. So this is for the June quarter, the quarter ending June. So that what this graph shows is the contributions to Australia's GDP growth. So in the previous graph, we were seeing, okay, that growth had been increasing in the June quarter. And that now this graph is telling us what are the things that contributed to GDP growth. So here, let's just put that into some words. We're saying here, what are the elements of the Australian economy that led to a rise in GDP in the June quarter of 2021? And so we can see here that this is the level of increase or decrease and that here are the elements of GDP. So you can see here, this is the overall GDP and we can see here that just as the same as the graph above, sorry, that in June quarter 21, that we saw that large increase in GDP. So this graph is really saying, okay, if that has happened, then this here is the why or the how from this. So if you look here, that the main contributor to GDP is consumption. And what we're saying here, so that's C in the um, aggregate demand Equation AD equals C plus I plus G plus net exports. And that what we're saying here is that once the prior lockdowns had finished and that people had started going back to normal, that there was a large increase in spending, in people's spending. And that is consumption because people were going back to cafes, people were starting to travel again, they were traveling domestically, that there was lots of money being spent that wasn't spent previously. So if you think about why did Australia's GDP grow in the June quarter, a major reason is that people started spending money. So that if you think about it as well, that we've got people can spend their income, they can save it, and they need to put some in tax. So that if we look at during lockdowns, that the focus is on saving. Once lockdown has finished, people then start spending again. And that's what was happening here. Remember that this is prior to the July, October lockdowns on the East Coast of Australia. If I think about what else contributed to GDP, You've got here people investing in housing, not much in mining, a little bit in non-mining. Here, look at this. That's the G part of aggregate demand. So that people, sorry, not people, that what happened was that the government was spending money, which was then also contributing to GDP. Here you can think about this in terms of the benefits that are being paid to businesses and individuals so that that is allowing people to then spend, invest and do other things that would be discouraged during COVID and lockdowns. So if you're being asked to talk about, well, what has been driving Australia's GDP growth as of June 2021, you can point to consumption and also government spending. And we're going to look at government spending in a bit more detail in the next graph. But basically here, we're looking at, well, what is the government doing in terms of its budget? And that during COVID, in order to increase economic activity, that the government has been spending greater than revenue. That government spending has exceeded taxation revenue. 
and that we have seen budget deficits, which is exactly what we're going to look like. Look like, look at in the next graph. So that is the contributions to GDP growth. So if we zoom out and we go down here, I particularly like this graph here. So this graph is talking about Australian government budget balance. And so the budget balance, if I'm looking here, is the relationship between government spending and taxation revenue. So basically we can have three situations. So that if we've got government spending is greater than taxation revenue, then the government would be running a budget deficit. If I've got government spending is less than revenue, then the government's looking at a budget surplus. And then if government spending is equal to taxation revenue, then you've got a balanced budget. So that if you look here, that this is the zero line. So that's telling us the difference between a surplus and a deficit. So that if I look, let's use a different color here. If I look at a surplus, that that is going to take place above here. The budget balance is positive. And then if I look at this deficit part here, that's going to be where the budget balance is negative. So that is taking place all the way along here. So that if I look at what the government has done in relation to COVID, that I'm focusing here. So what I can see is that, I'll just go over here, is that in response, that the government has increased spending quite substantially. If you can see here that the deficits peaking at greater than 7.5% of GDP. And what the government is doing here is that it is running expansionary, so attempting to expand the economy, expansionary fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is the federal government's use of the federal budget to achieve economic objectives. So if you're looking at questions like what has the Australian government done in response to COVID or what is the Australian government doing in terms of macroeconomic policy, you can say that the government is running sizable budget deficits, right, to increase economic growth and to try and overcome the effects of COVID-19. Now, you can see here that this goes out to 2024-25 and as of now, we are in 2021. So that here, that what the government does is it presents forecasts of what it thinks will happen. So you can see that even out to 2025, that the government expects we will still be in budget deficit because of all the spending that has taken place. And if you think about what is this spending, like what is being used here, that you can think about programs like Job Seeker, Job Keeper, all the income support measures and the assistance to business costs a lot of money to the government. And so that's what this graph is showing us. Okay, let's move on to the next graph. So we've been looking a lot at the Australian economy with our first three graphs. And now we're going to look at the world economy. So you can see here that this graph is GDP growth world and it's yearly figures. So that what this shows us here is it says major trading partners. So what that means is that these are Australia's major trading partners. So economy like uh, China, economies like China, the US, that kind of thing. So you can see here that that's the orange and the blue is for the world. So you can see here that during the peak of COVID um, last year, 2020, World economy, GDP growth fell, and that of our trading partners, and that here, that it has started to pick up again in terms of their GDP growth. So there's a couple of points that I would make from this. One is that this graph is really great in showing how synchronized, that's not how you spell synchronized, how synchronized global growth is that when one economy, major economy falls, that affects the entire world economy. So you can see here that everything is moving in the same direction. 
And the other thing that this graph is showing us is it's showing us that world GDP is recovering. And that the reason why this is important is that this means that if other economies around the world are growing, particularly our trading partners, then we're likely to see increasing demand for Australia's exports because those economies are growing. They need Australia's raw materials, its resources. So they will demand more of Australia's exports. And that's good news for aggregate demand. That will result in higher aggregate demand for Australia and contribute positively to Australia's GDP. So what we're saying here is that the conditions in terms of the world economy are very positive in terms of demand for Australia's exports, aggregate demand and GDP, and that if you're talking about the global economy, that you could use this period of time as an example to show how synchronized the world economy is, that the impact of globalization in linking the economies, that as the major trading, sorry, as the major economies fall in terms of their GDP, the whole world decreases as well. Okay, let's look at our final graph for now. And our final graph is combining domestic and international in the sense of Australia's current account balance. Now, when I studied economics at school, we only ever talked about current account deficits. So that here we have this figure zero, and that that is where we have a current account which is sort of equal or probably better to say it's balanced so that anything below zero that's a current account deficit anything above there is a current account surplus so what we're doing is we're looking at the blue here which tells us the current account balance and what you can see here is that right now so rn right now 2021 that Australia has a current account surplus which is worth or valued at around 3% of GDP. And that's important because can you see here that going back to the early 90s, we have had a current account deficit. So that we would then think about why is Australia running a current account deficit? Sorry, <laughs> why isn't Australia running a current account deficit? Why is it running a current account surplus? So that if you think about a current account deficit, that the things that really drive a current account deficit are net exports, which is the same thing as the trade balance, and then net primary income. If you look at NPY here, which is in green, that NPY is still negative. Yeah, okay, it's gotten smaller, but it's still negative. However, if you look at net exports, net exports is very positive. So that if you're thinking about why is Australia running a current account surplus? Well, it is because net exports has been growing. And what that tells us is two things. One, increased demand for Australia's exports. And then two, increase prices for Australia's exports. And that's good news in terms of GDP and aggregate demand. So that if we are looking at this in terms of how we could use it, is that you might be talking about, well, what is the situation of Australia's current account and why is it the way it is? What are the drivers of the current account and how is that working as of 2021? Um, and it's really explaining why Australia has shifted from running persistent current account deficits to now a current account surplus. So as mentioned, all of these graphs come from the RBA's chart pack. There'll be a link in the description. I'll also include a link to this online whiteboard in the show notes so you can have another look at some of the annotations. If you've got any questions or comments, things that you might need to clarify, just put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.